Hello friends, this is Dr. Sangeet and welcome back to another lecture of Dental Patchala where we help you understand and learn dentistry better and easy way. And today's topic we are going to talk about the pre-malignant lesion and conditions that can lead to cancer if left untreated in further stages. So without further ado, let's get started. back to another 10 in 10 series where we cover each topic under 10 headings in 10 minutes and today's topic is oral submucous fibrosis which is a pre-malignant condition so before we get started make sure you subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our future notifications so talking about the oral submucous fibrosis that means there is going to be fibrosis which is occurring in the oral mucosa so in the submucosa there is fibrosis which is happening in the histopathological pathologically so this oral submucous fibrosis as we know that this is a pre-malignant condition so everything is there in the definition itself so this is an incident it is an insidious chronic disease affecting any part of the oral cavity and sometimes pharynx although occasionally preceded by and or associated with the vesicle formation and is always associated with the juxtra epithely, epithelial inflammatory reaction followed by the fibroelastic changes of the lamina propria with the epithelial atrophy leading to the stiffness of oral mucosa and causing trismus and inability to eat so oral submucous fibrosis is an insidious chronic disease that means this is a chronic disease and it can affect any part of the oral tissue so uh, it can affect the buccal mucosa uh, retromolar pad which are the uh, most sites most common site but also sometimes the pharynx so it can also occur in the soft palate uvula palatal process so in the pharynx and occasionally although occasionally preceded and or by associated with the vesicle formation so there is a vesicle formation clinically and is always associated with a juxtra epithelial inflammatory reaction so there is an inflammatory reaction we will see in the pathological view juxtra epithelial inflammatory reaction followed by the fibroelastic changes so initially there is uh, inflammatory reaction and later on there are changes in the lamina propria fibroelastic changes in the lamina propria so there is a fibrosis as the name suggests fibrosis so there is fibroelastic changes of the lamina propria with the epithelial atrophy so along with that along with the uh, changes fibroelastic changes of the lamina propria there is atrophy of the epithelium leading to there is stiffness of the oral mucosa so patient won't be able to open or close the mouth patient won't be able to eat properly causing the trismus which is inability to open the mouth and inability to eat so what happens in a patient one of my cousin was having uh, my aunt's uh, son was having oral submucous fibrosis they had the habit of having uh, these pans so the, because of the pan or excess chili so they used to eat so much of chili in their food so uh, because of so too much of chili consumption also there is oral submucous fibrosis and this aunt was there in the south india most common because incidences occur in most commonly higher in the southern part of india so then in india it has got a high prevalence of oral mucous fibrosis and also in the indian subcontinent so this there is a stiffness patient is not able to open the mouth properly so we used to guide him uh, through the some uh, exercises so also because the patient is not able to uh, open the mouth so there is a rigidity the patient's mouth or jaw gets stuck so he is not here not able to open the mouth and also there is a so much of burning sensation forget chili patient is not able to eat spicy food at all after having oral submucous fibrosis so there is trismus patient is not able to mouth, open the mouth and not able to eat properly there is burning sensation all these things and there is see mucosa if you see the mucosa since the as the name suggests fibrosis the mucosa is very stiff so you can even feel that there is a stiffness or the specific areas they have got a very blanching of mucosa you can see in that particular areas so if you look at what causes the oral submucous fibrosis to make it easier for you to understand the etiology is a b c d e f g h 
so this is autoimmune disease if patient is having uh, beetle uh, nut uh, erica nut um, beetle nut so these uh, beetle nuts have got to the inner kernel or the seed which is obtained after removing the husk these have got anti psychotropic it this have got psychotropic or anti helminthic properties so due to the presence of erica nut these have got powerful parasympathetic properties which causes euphoria also chili consumption so uh, basically chili capsicum and or capsicum fruitis fruit fruitisense uh, caps capsin is an active ingredient which is present in the chili so which is an irritant so there is 8 methyl 6 non anic acid which is an active ingredient which is an irritation which causes the mu sub mucus fibrosis also deficiency of iron b complex also causes oral sub mucus fibrosis and we can also see there is increased in the esr count there is also folic acid deficiency uh, people with osmf we see that they are having the folic acid deficiency so all these things you see microcystic hypochromic anemia we can see with the in the patient with a oral sub mucus fibrosis so folic acid deficiency also we can see the genetic pattern so uh, the if the father uh, it runs in the family osmf so what happens the patient are sensitive hypersensitive to erica nut and chili the most common side which is involved in the oral sub mucus fibrosis is the buccal mucosa and the retromolar patch so you will see these patches you will see these blanching of the oral mucosa so uh, these blanching or sometimes the patient complains of burning initially the burning sensation of the oral mucosa now this is aggravated by the spicy food now after that the patient will either hypersalivate or there will be zero stomia but the most common features are the vesiculation ulceration pigmentation reoccurrent stomatitis and defective uh, gustatory sensations we can see and late symptoms are the trismus we can see the patient will complain of inability to open the mouth completely there can be stiffness of the oral mucosa to such an extent that patient won't be able to open the mouth there will be difficulty in swallowing so if the pharynx uh, is involved because uh, see sometimes it affects the pharynx also if pharynx esophagus in, is involved then the patient will have difficulty in swallowing the difficulty in protruding the tongue and also even the pain can be referred to ear so sometime my uh, cousin used to tell that i am having this some ear ache or because due to the occlusion of the eustachian tube so there can be ear pain <coughs> or deafness we can also see the blanching of the mucosa so what happens the oral mucosa this is the earliest sign we see these blanching or marble like appearance see what happens the this is the earliest sign the blanching we see because of the impairment of the local vascularity so because of the fibrosis of uh, sub mucus fibrosis so because there are fibroelastic changes in the lamina propria because of that vascularity is impaired and because of this we see the blanching of the mucosa is slightly opaque or white so this whitening often takes place in the spots so often there are spots which are uh, which are formed in the blanching of that particular region having osmf so we see a marble like appearance clinically we have many classifications for osmf but uh, we will talk about few classifications so based on the clinical finding according to pinborg we have the stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 stage 1 stomatitis erythematous mucosa vesicles ulcers and petechiae petechiae are there stage 2 we have fibrosis in the healing vesicles and also there is blanching of the mucosa palpable bands are seen and mottled marble like appearance Stage three is the sequel of OSMF, leukoplakia, and speech and hearing defects. The uh, deficit we can see now. The another classification is based on the interincisor distance. As we know that there is a reduced mouth opening, right? So there is a restricted tongue movement. There is reduced mouth opening. So based on the interincisor distance, the distance between the two incisors, we have four groups. Group one is when there is in more than thirty-five millimeter of the interincisor distance. Two is between thirty to thirty-five. Three is between twenty to thirty, and four is less than twenty millimeters of interincisor distance. Is there? Then the functional stage. So mouth opening, if it is greater than or equal to twenty millimeters, it is one. Second is when the mouth opening is between eleven to nineteen millimeters. Three is when the mouth opening is less than or equal to ten millimeters. 
so coming to grades of osm first grade is when only the blanching of mucosa is present without any symptom grade 2 is burning sensation and dryness and vesicle and ulcer formation is there grade 3 is grade 2 that means burning sensation dryness vesicle ulcer as well as restricted mouth opening grade 4 is grade 3 plus palpable fibrotic band grade 5 is uh, grade 4 plus tongue movement grade 6 is grade 5 plus histological proven cancer so grade 6 will be everything plus histological proven proven cancer so histologically as it is given in the definition itself that there is going to be juxtaepithelial inflammatory reaction followed by see there will be followed by fibroelastic changes of the lamina propria epithelial atrophy so all these things will be there in the histology so histology there is atrophy of the epithelium flattening of the retapex so and to variable degree of cellular atypia so, and in osm we see in the connective tissue that there is homogenization and the hyalinization of the collagen fiber so there is degeneration of the muscle fiber and chronic inflammatory infiltration we also see how are we going to treat it so depending on the degree of involvement again and we are going to ask the patient to stop the habits diet improvement because the patient cannot eat spicy food so have to maintain the oral hygiene and close follow up and minute monitoring and then we do the physiotherapy so forceful mouth opening exercises tongue blade exercise heat therapy lukewarm water rinse all these things we ask the patient to do so also if uh, there is any requirement for the surgical excision of the fibrotic band then we surgically remove it we also have medicines so like steroids we can give anti inflammatory immunosuppressants like injection of dexamethasone 1.5 ml this is going to prevent the fibrosis by decreasing the fibroelastic proliferation and deposition of the collagen fibers it will decrease then also we can give the antioxidants like antoxid Three times a day into six weeks. This is going to decrease the burning sensation. So, antoxid is going to repress the fibrotic band. So, there will be change in the color because antoxid contains beta carotene, vitamin A, and palmitate. So, turmeric also. We ask the patient if the patient is having the milk. We ask. We used to ask. Tell my cousin to have the turmeric along with the milk. So, this is an antioxidant. It protect the DNA and it also has anti mutagenic property. So, placentrix. This is a solution of human placenta which we give hyaluronic. days is a fibrinolytic agent this is the most important thing hyaluronic days we give it 1500 iu so this is going to decrease the collagen fiber break down the hyaluronic acid also we give the pentoxyphylline so this is methyl xanthine zin derivative which is 4400 mg we give orally three times a day for seven months so this is a immune modulator anti inflammatory or vasodilator also we can ask the patient to have immunized cow milk not because i am from haryana no but it actually helps so this is about about oral mucous fibrosis so everything is there in the definition itself that this is going to be there see what happens in oral submucous fibrosis there is a blanching of mucosa which occurs so there is ulceration and all these things but the most important is that clinically the patient is unable to open the mouth and patient cannot eat because it is because of the chili and patient cannot eat spicy food at all after having this because there is so much of burning sensation so there is trismus and there is tightening or fibrosis as the name suggests fibrosis so tightening of the mucosa which occurs there is stiffness of the oral mucosa and because of that there is stiffness and patient is unable to eat so this is about oral submucous fibrosis if you have enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up also you can comment in the comment section below and there is a link in the description box below to support me on patreon as well as on paypal to make free videos for you guys till then keep reading keep learning stay motivated i will see you soon in the next video